Keith Lockage. I'm a fellow at the Ayn Rand Center for Individual Rights, and I'm here at the uh, Energy, Energy and Environment Conference in Phoenix. I just gave a talk on a panel session uh, devoted to energy and economic impacts, and I think I uh, basically shocked the whole room with my uh, heretical views on climate here. Um, you know, this panel you, it, it consists of people who are talking, of, you know, people from the Department of Energy and people in you know, National Energy Renewable Energy Lab, and they're talking about how they're going to bring renewable projects online and all this very sort of thing. My talk was, you know, I, I, I spoke about climate vulnerability and, and the effects of political and economic systems on that. And my perspective is that that if we maintain free markets, if we maintain, uh, you know, if, if we remove government interventions and regulations and we, and we pres and, you know, we don't impose, you know, a massive carbon capping regime, um, you know, that preserves our ability, our resilience against natural disasters, it preserves the functioning of our, the thriving of our economy, and it keeps us uh, safe from climate disasters. So I'm arguing that we shouldn't be doing any of this. Um, and, you know, it definitely uh, stirred, stirred the pot here a little bit. Well, one of your fellow panelists um, used the word denier in describing you and, yes. and a person yes. sitting right behind me in the audience um, said that your presentation reminded him of the, I guess, the lies of big tobacco. Uh, what's your reaction to, I know you tried to you know, take the dis discussion a little bit away from, yeah. you know, you're not there really debating global warming science. You're there debating, you know, economic models and the politics of, of all these things and, and societies, how they deal with these, with these things. Um, but what was your reaction uh, to being called basically a, a denier and, uh, and to say that obviously I think the implications that you're some kind of shill as like Big Tobacco would be for a lie? Yeah, I mean, which is completely ridiculous, but, uh, you know, the way I see it is this movement has so much uh, momentum behind it. You know, once it gets down to the level of a conference like this, you've got thousands of people here, you know, who are, who are past the point of, of thinking rationally about these issues. They're just, they just, you know, accept the, uh, the claims that they hear, and they're just, you know, marching forward, looking at all the details of how we're going to implement this massive carbon regulation regime. So, uh, you know, it doesn't surprise me that, they're, that they'll have a strong emotional reaction. Um, I can take it. Uh, and, you know, my, my goal is just to offer my views in a, as calm and rational a way as I can and hopefully have an impact on people who are open to hearing another point of view. If you've been to many panel discussions in your two days here yeah. in Phoenix, uh, can you give me an impression of, of um, you know, what you've heard? What are the themes? Are there things that people are talking about here um, that either uh, disturb you or surprise you? Well, they don't surprise me at all and they definitely disturb me. Um, you know, I mean, basically what I gleaned from the plenary sessions and, you know, the panels that I've attended is you know, where everyone is committed to, you know, 80 percent, you know, basically cutting off greenhouse gas emissions. The technology is not there. It's going to cost two to three trillion dollars of GDP. And, you know, the government needs to do it. Let's go forward. So, I mean, basically, the, everybody here just wants to walk our, our society and our economy off a cliff. And, you know, they're just eagerly looking at all the details necessary to implement that that coming disaster. So, yeah, it's 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 not a good situation. I mean, I mean, the good news is, you know, coming out of Copenhagen, Copenhagen was a complete failure. Um, it, it doesn't look likely that anything's going to happen in the Senate, especially with the recent election in Massachusetts on cap and trade. You know, so as much as people here want to see all this uh, regulation happening, the new legislation and so on, it doesn't look likely that anything's coming soon. So we have a breathing spell, but the, but the ideas that are formed the impetus for this movement, the you know, ideas coming out of environmentalism and the role of government in people's lives, you know, those views are very strongly dominant in our culture. And uh, so even if it's on the ropes right now, it's gonna come back. And the only, what, what we need to do is change the, the fundamental ideas the fundamental approach that people take to these issues, you know, the way they look at man's 
relationship to nature. You know, uh, and if you look at, at our Ayn Rand Center, AynRandCenter.org, if you look, look at, a, at our some of the writings we have on science and environmentalism, that gives you an idea of the kind of approach that we take to that. Keith, thanks for being with us. Okay, thanks, Jim.